today is equipped day. I just want to show my best. I just want to perform the way I want to perform. I really want to showcase what I'm capable of. Good morning, everybody. Today is Saturday, May 27th, 2023, and I'm just on my way to the venue. Today is equipped day. So oh, I am very excited. I, I'm excited. Um, I just want to show my best. I just want to perform the way I want to perform. And, you know, if that happens, then, you know, the chips will fall as they may. You can't control what anybody else does. But I really want to showcase what I'm capable of. So, wish me luck. Let me just show you this view for this walk. This is the last time I'm going to be taking this walk. This is the last day of competition. And it's pretty cool. So this is the walk. This is what I see multiple times a day when I go to the venue. It is so beautiful here. Uh, yeah, I'm just very, very grateful. It's been, it's been a fantastic experience and uh, can't wait to see what today brings. 125 in the under 63s. And so many of these ladies having already competed this week. Maria was a silver medalist at this competition last year. An equipped bench. So this won't change that, but it certainly makes it harder for anyone else to challenge. Followed by Kanja Leiden and Ishibashi. Oh, it looks good. good it is. Three whites. Three's, she's the lighter lifter there of her challenges. So she has the silver medal. She's not safe in silver. But this then forces her competitors to lift up. And don't forget, we have another flight straight after this. And just couldn't quite get it there. So we have an attempt change going in now. An interesting fight here for the silver medal between the third and the second place. Silver medal goes to Frank Maria from Canada with 127.5 kilos. Let's do the recap for Equip Worlds. This was a different story from Tuesday. I was definitely wanting some redemption after my disappointing Tuesday, where I feel I underperformed. Uh, so yeah, I competed on Saturday, May 27th, uh, in Equipped Bench Only, and Weight-wise, it was really weird. So I mentioned in my last video that when I was doing a little water cut to meet the 57 class, that it worked a little too well, and I weighed in at like 55.8. Uh, I was having a hard time keeping weight on and staying above 57. So that was odd. Um, in order to compete in a weight class, like in an under 63 kilo weight class, where which is where I was registered, you have to weigh more than the weight class below it. So you have to weigh at least 57.05. So I was like <laughs> drinking water, or er, not water, <laughs> drinking apple juice at breakfast. I was drinking milkshakes at supper. Like the night before I had a steak and two big milkshakes. Uh, like just really trying to get calories in. 
and I ended up weighing in at 57.10. <laughs> and the woman doing the weigh-ins told me, no, you should have competed as a 57. She was a little cranky. <laughs> She's like, oh, you should have competed 57. You know, these 10 grams were a blessing. And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> that was the point. Um, but also I will say that one of the lifters in my 63 kilo class had competed with me in the 57s and had weighed in super light at like 54 point something. So I knew that she was playing the weight class game. Um, I'm kind of impressed that she made it all the way from 54 on Tuesday to like, I don't remember what she weighed, 58 uh, on Saturday. Um, so she was able to, to uh, put on the weight a lot easier than I was able to. So with that said, I had body weight advantage over everybody else in the class because I barely made it into the uh, weight class. So that's important to note. <laughs> um, Anyway, so warm-ups were moving. Oh, they moved okay until my first touch. And I touched at 125 kilos. And I was supposed to open at 127 and a half. That was the plan. 125 was not good. It was bad. Uh, just like up and down. It was hard. It was, you know, my first rep is not usually the best rep. Uh, things sort of move better once the shirt's a little stretched. It's more in the position that I like it to be in. But anyway, with 125 moving the way it did, um, we dropped the opener to 125 from 127 and a half. And then when I took it on the platform, moved super well, um, smooth, easy. Um, the next move up was 127 and a half, which also moved really well, um, moved better than 125. And then we moved to what had been my planned second at 132 and a half kilos. And at this point, there was one lifter who had lifted 125. Um, I haven't watched the full session. Uh, I normally don't, I don't know why. I watched my lifts, but kind of, I don't know why it kind of freaks me out to watch everybody else's. But uh, there's one lifter who lifted 125, and then there was um, a lifter, this Finnish lifter I was telling you about, who lifted 127 and a half. But with me being lighter, I was still ahead of her. So I was in second place, moving into third attempts. First place was like, like I think she ended up benching 160. Like she was like way in another in another class, class of her own. Um, incredible, but uh, way out of reach, uh, definitely for me at, at this world. So going into thirds, we put in 132 and a half. Now I had a low lot number, which means that in terms of lifting order, I would go first, and then someone with a higher lot number would go after me. So I put in 132 and a half. The Finnish lifter, who I was tied with, um, but was a head, uh, head on, on body weight, she also put in 132 and a half. Um, the lifter from Ukraine, who lifted 125 kilos on her second attempt, I think she also put in 132 and a half. So we were all lifting the same weight. I can't remember if they, they might've had higher weights and then dropped them, but for, as far as I know, we all had the same third attempt. Uh, so I went up first and failed. Oh, like this is weight should not have crushed me like that. Um, I don't, I don't know what happened. I just exhaustion um, from the week. I was up, you know, taking pictures of everybody. It was fun. I loved it. Um, and I was so happy to be able to do that for the team. Um, but you know, being on your feet all day, being like that um, emotionally like aroused constantly, like you're emotionally invested in, you know, in your lifters, uh, that probably took a toll. Elevation, like my heart rate was like super high all week, weirdly, like normally my heart rate during sleep is like around 50, like high 40s, low 50s, and it was like over 70. Like it was, and I could tell, like it was like something was off, but, uh, for whatever reason, 132 and a half just didn't move that day. Uh, so that was disappointing. I thought I would have had it. Uh, again, I had so much support from the crowd, which was so awesome. Um, I'm so grateful for everyone who took the time to come out. I know a couple people were leaving that day, but came to the venue to watch me lift first. So that was, uh, that maybe makes me so happy. But so I lifted 130, or <laughs> did not lift 132 and a half, but the other lifters then still had to go. And you can't go back down in weight, so they couldn't lift 130. They had to lift at least 132 and a half. 
So the first lifter went and we were backstage just peeking through, you know, little cracks in the <laughs> little slits in the um, backdrop. And we see if she gets it off the chest and I thought she was going to get it, but then just fail, lost it and failed. So that meant that uh, I was definitely on the podium in bronze. Well, at least a bronze medal at this point. Um, so then the other lifter went to lift and the same thing, I got it off the chest easily. I was like, oh no, <laughs> I, you know, I, you never want to cheer for somebody to fail a lift, but I, I really wanted to win. <laughs> so I'm not going to uh, pretend I didn't, um, but she failed also. And at that point I knew I'd won silver and I was very happy. Um, it was a great moment. Um, you know, sorry to the other lifters. I don't want to be disrespectful, but um, I'm happy for myself. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Um, you know, I definitely didn't have the best day. Um, I'm sure they probably say the same, you know, but, uh, I was very happy, you know, the team, we all celebrated together and it was awesome to get to share that with everyone. Like, yeah, that was just like the best, the best way to end the competition. Um, for me, uh, this was also the last day of the competition. Um, and it actually ended up, uh, with the men, with the heavyweight men and, uh, you know, Canada actually ended up getting a gold and a bronze in the very last session. So the last anthem we heard at Worlds was the Canadian anthem. So it was, it was a fantastic day. Um, we were all just like over the moon. Um, yeah, that was a pretty magical day. So actually, let me show you my silver medal. There it is. There's the front and the back. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was Worlds 2023. Uh, you know, when I think about the meet as a whole, you know, South Africa was beautiful. Uh, it was really, really amazing to go and to see everything. We went on a few safaris, you know, we saw so many animals. Um, it was like shocking, <laughs> like how easy it is to see animals in the national park. Like you just like drive in and like within half an hour, you've seen like three of the top of the big five, right? Like, uh, they're just everywhere. And it's just, it's so cool to see them, you know, in the wild, in their natural habitat. And it was cool that we were able to do that with, uh, some other members of the team. So, you know, got to share that experience together. And, you know, just everything about Worlds is just indescribable to anyone who hasn't been. Um, and I would highly recommend that anyone who is qualified to go, that they go and just have that experience, you know, meeting people obviously from around the world. Um, you know, I've made friends with people from other countries, you know, like lifelong friendships. And also like our team, Team Canada was so strong this year. Um, just a really close knit team. You know, most of us were staying at the same hotel. You know, you have breakfast together. There's always some place for you to sit at breakfast. Um, you know, people to talk to. We just had a really good energy. You know, we come to the venue, support each other during our lifts. You know, Jason was head coach. Uh, he and the assistant coach, Gary, they did a phenomenal job with everybody. You know, I know they cared so deeply for each and every one of us. Um, and tried to do the best they could um, to put us all in the best position that we could be in. Um, and they got along really, really well. And that was, that was really nice to see that, you know, that chemistry, that um, coaching team chemistry, like there were no conflicts or anything. Like they just worked really, really well together. Um, and that was awesome. They are going to be the team coaches again next year. So definitely grateful for that. Uh, we're, very fortunate to have them as our Team Canada coaches. And yeah, it was just, it was indescribable and unforgettable. And, you know, definitely, definitely top life moments, one of the top life moments, definitely one of the top lifting moments ever. Um, you know, and it's like each year just keeps getting better. You know, my first world in Tokyo in 2019, I didn't feel that the team was very close. Um, and maybe that's just me. Maybe I missed out on the memos and stuff um, to 
totally possible. I was off, you know, visiting Shiba Inu cafes and stuff, you know, like uh, I, I wanted to see Japan, right? So I was touring around quite a lot. Um, then Lithuania, uh, that was, you know, we were all quite close. Um, we were all staying at this hotel resort um, just outside the city with like one hotel bar where everybody hung out. Um, but it was still a pretty small team. This was like end of COVID times. Um, and then this year we had a big team and, you know, we just got even closer. So, um, you know, I've won, you know, I have my silver medal. I've got a couple participation medals, um, but uh, definitely the most valuable things um, that I take away from this are the experiences, the memories, um, and the relationships with, you know, with our team and with other people, like with other teams and other athletes and coaches and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was pretty awesome. Um, and you know, it ended on a high note for me, um, competitively. I'm happy. I'm happy with my silver, you know, golds, gold was way out of reach, you know, like 160 is not in my wheelhouse just yet. Um, and yeah, next year worlds are going to be in Austin, Texas, same time of year, like end of May. I'm so excited for worlds to be so close to home. Like so, so excited. Um, you know, we're going to have, you know, the food's going to be similar. Elevation will be similar. Um, obviously, you know, the culture and everything, Canada and the States are very similar. Um, yeah, just everything, you know, the time zones, people at home can watch me without having to wake up at four in the morning. Um, I think we're going to have a pretty big team, I would guess, just because it's so close. Um, but I'm so excited. Um, we shared a platform in the back, a warm, our warm up platform with the Americans, like almost the entire week. Um, you know, Canada, Canada and the States, you know, we have a pretty tight relationship. Um, and that is super cool. Um, the Americans, you know, all the ones I met were awesome. So it's cool to sort of have that, not alliance, but like, you know, good relationship with each other. Um, so I'm excited for it to be there. It definitely feels, you know, like home, like sort of home, <laughs> definitely not, you know, as far away as Africa. Um, it looks like the next couple years after that, they'll be back in Europe for, I think, Norway in 2025, um, potentially Budapest 2026, which would be like, oh, I haven't been back since I lived there, um, like 15 years ago or something. So I would love to go back, but um, yeah, definitely something about, you know, semi home turf <laughs> next year uh, that I am so looking forward to. It will also be my first year as a master's lifter. So I have some very big goals. Um, one little announcement I will make right now moving forward. So my shoulders actually feel okay um, right now. They felt okay after lifting. They feel good now. I don't want to jinx myself and say they're like 100% healed, but they're like, they feel really good. Um, so I am ready to train properly again and not, you know, as intuitively as I was treating training leading into this. So interestingly enough, after um, my equip day, Natalie Hansen, who was my former coach, reached out to me and was like, oh, how'd, you, how'd it go? Um, and I'd been thinking about working with her again. So I, you know, I know she has a limited roster. So I messaged her back. I told her how it went. And then I was like, you know, I know if there's space on your roster, like I'd love to work together again. And she said there was space for me. So I will be working with Natalie now moving forward. I am excited to see where we can go. I had great, great progress while I was working with her. We had a good relationship. Natalie's awesome. She's a world champion. But yeah, I am very grateful for the South African experience and I am looking ahead to the future with a lot of new goals, new M1 goals and uh, excitement. And um, yeah, I will take you along with me, of course, as always. And um, big things coming. So you have my word. <laughs> At least I will do my best to ensure that big things do come. <laughs> so anyway, I'm rambling now, but thank you so much for watching. Thank you for following along on this journey. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to follow along on 
the aforementioned big things <laughs> coming up and I will see you all later. Bye.